10 minutes let's go all right well this month of june we've done really well we've exported over one megawatt and octopus have paid us 170 pounds for that at 15 pence per kilowatt hour and uh on to what we've actually imported only 116 brought in from the grid priced up at 17 pounds 38 so here's a little reminder of what we've got if you're new to the channel and that's six panels on the front of our building which faces southeast and this is 16 on the rear of the building which controversially faces northwest and um, we have to work with what we've got that's the roof that's on our building we can only squeeze six and the more kind of optimal orientation so that's what we've done there 430 watt panels each and um, there's plenty of other videos you can go back and see a full installation video if you want to see the exact details and uh, you can see some other videos of why I've made the decision to put them on the northwest facing aspect but this video should go to show that 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 is a viable orientation oh yeah sun sink inverter we got an 8.8 .8 kilowatt sun sink inverter which I'm very happy with anyway on with the slideshow the clock is ticking so our June generation total 1,333.6 kilowatt hours. So I want to answer a couple of questions in this video. Is the orientation or the surface area more important? Is a home battery a waste of money? Those two questions were in my previous video for the month of May. So if you saw that, spoiler alert, my conclusion is exactly the same for June. But a third question has been brought in. What is the return on investment that we're expecting, that we're aiming for? And how do we think we're going with that after now getting close to six months of generation data? OK, let's keep moving. I'm on the wrong screen again. So here you can see our forecasted generation in the blue bars and what we've actually generated in the orange bars. So you can see that depending on which month you pick up, we are somewhere between 10 to 30 percent above our forecast and um, there seems to be a few factors for that but the main thing is our southeast panels are performing almost exactly as we anticipated but the northwest panels are outperforming massively and although uh, a few other uh, people who are recording data tell me that the year so far 2024 has been quite a bad year for solar panels we are still outperforming our forecast. So maybe in 2025, if we get a typical year, or maybe towards the end of this year, we might outperform even more. Here's the export versus import profile. You can see for the month of January, we only had our system commissioned right at the very end of January. So I've only got a couple of days of export there on the table. But you can see how we've gone from using 801 watts in the heating months. I've got a heat pump if you're new to the channel, down to just 116 kilowatts uh, being imported in the month of June. And obviously exporting over a megawatt, which we are very megawatt hour need to make sure I get that or I'm going to have a few people in the comments picking me up here's our heat pump consumption I know a lot of people who are interested in solar panels also are interested in the whole electrification so our heat pump consumption continues to fall um, that's for a few reasons although the heating didn't really come on in May at all um, we still used almost half the amount of energy needed and that is just basically the the ambient temperatures the warmer water to begin with meaning we didn't have to heat the tank up so high um those kind of things make a not that we didn't have to heat it up so high the temperature we heated the tank to was exactly the same but we needed to put less energy in to get that tank up to the same temperature every day we didn't we weren't away on holiday. We didn't use any less water or anything like that. So this is our actual solar generation throughout the month. You can see the good months, the bad months, our best day, the good months, the good days, the bad days. Our best day was actually on the 2nd of June. Although we had towards the end of the month, we had a lot of very sunny and bright days because it was very warm and high temperatures up in the 20s we saw a bit of reduced performance on the panels. So I'll show some of that a bit later in some of the graphs. But our best day was 59 kilowatt hours, which is slightly down from May, actually. Our very best day in May was 59.1. Our worst was 23.6 kilowatt hours, but our mean was right up high at 44.45 kilowatt hours. So very happy with the average uh, generation throughout the month. This shows that 
um, of the potential capacity or potential generation, the the peak amount that is uh, fitted on the roof, 73% of the solar panels surface area is facing northwest 27 facing southeast and that translates into 69 percent this is just for this month of june uh, not the overall year so far 69 percent of the energy generated is coming off the northwest facing roof and only 31 off the southeast so not a huge discrepancy between the actual potential surface area that's covered and then how much they're actually generating but a little bit more to break that down per panel production southeast the average for the month 69 kilowatt hours per panel produced on the southeast aspect and 57 kilowatt hours produced on the northwest aspect and uh, let's talk a little bit about optimizers uh, i've scaled this terribly so you've struggled to see it but here you can see the tiny little light green bars are what is being reclaimed or optimized energy by our tigo optimizers only 4.33 kilowatt hours and uh, the without them we would have potentially um, generated 411.9 kilowatt hours and the tigo optimizers are only on the southeast aspect so only the six panels on the front of the building and um this show, goes to show that only 1% of the energy from those panels was because of those optimizers. So in these months where the sun is higher in the sky, we are not seeing the shading from the front gable that we anticipated and that we will see in the winter. So the optimizers still could come into their own by the time we've had a full year of data collected. But right now for summer, the optimizers are not looking like a good financial investment. Uh, and there's a demonstration you can see if I use my cursor on my mouse you can see that at the moment the sun is so high in the sky that this front uh, part of the roof it doesn't shade the panels so the sun comes across this is going from east over to west and so the sun later in the day finishes over here but right now it's um right now it's not shading these panels really at all until extremely late in the day but by the time the sun goes over the back of the house all of the panels pretty much fall into shade at exactly the same time so not really any need for optimizers we'll see what the winter brings are the north facing panels worth it well the rule of thumb that everyone told me is that the north facing panels will only generate 50 percent of what south facing panels will of course i don't have perfectly north and south aspects my roof orientation is almost exactly it's one degree off exactly northwest southeast and my northwest panels are producing 83 percent compared to southeast thank you to the the uh, subscriber last month who picked up on the discrepancy in my figures and i've corrected those now going forward your comments are always very welcome june self-consumption we um, self-consumed 222.42 kilowatt hours that is an increase from may even though our overall energy consumption is lower we have used more in terms of self-consumption i think that's just because of the longer daylight hours maybe we've shifted more of our consumption of daylight hours we also because octopus agile rates were quite low we did run a lot of the appliances during solar time as well, rather than shifting them into the night time as well. So do we need a battery? At the moment, the battery is still not looking like it would be a good financial decision. But once again, those sums could massively change as the winter comes. So we're really happy breaking the one megawatt hour bat, uh, barrier this month for the June export. And of course, that is helping with what i've termed the seasonal off offsetting strategy um that you just build up all the credit throughout the summer and that rides you through the winter no need for a battery let's see if this can be if it can actually work and if we can generate enough that we can end up with a zero bill by the end of a calendar year this was the profile for the export so we had a day of gen of exporting over 50 kilowatt hours we had a couple of other days that got close in the high 40s our mean um average day of uh export was 37 kilowatt hours so very healthy amounts of export We're getting close to 10 minutes i need to hurry up 
stop waffling. 17% of the energy was self-consumed. 83% of the generated energy was exported from the solar panels. This uh, this translates into a financial cost of £167 being paid by Octopus in the export and £56 value in the self-consumed if I was on the standard fixed tariff. Um, this my strategy of uh, seasonal offsetting is only made possible through octopus and their great smart tariffs so if you're interested go and join up we both get 50 quid um here you can see how we're progressing through the months and the green bar is the pv generation and the yellow bars are the export i was expecting may and june to kind of be the same really it to have plateaued but we still see a little bit of uh, upward trend i don't expect that to continue i expect that july july will be a little bit lower than june and um this as always is a little token bit from the sunsync app making us feel good that we've reduced our co2 reduction by four tons and everything else but what i just wanted to pick up on this is the equivalent tree planting now I know that this is optimistic and I haven't really saved this much because our grid is so much cleaner than this and I keep promising that I'll do some calculations in the next video and I never get around to it so I'm going to keep that on the table but what I just want to pick up on is despite all of this solar generation and this being wildly optimistic it only it only um it only equates to 2.4 trees being planted. In reality, I'm nowhere near that. So we would all do well to, if we can, plant trees or encourage someone who has some land to plant some trees. Anyway, our best day, this is the little profile for it, 59 kilowatt hours back on the 2nd of June. By 6.30 a.m., we were producing one kilowatt and the generation started at 5 a.m., two kilowatts at 7.55 3 kilowatts at 9 a.m., 4 kilowatts at 10 a.m., 5 kilowatts at 11 a.m., almost exactly 9, 10, 11, 6 kilowatts at 12.20, and we didn't get up to our peak of 7 kilowatts that day because it, the, the panels have warmed up so much through the morning that they lose a bit of efficiency, and we never reach that absolute peak that we would on a much cooler day, or we get we got on some of the other days where that had been cloud cover and the panels were nice and cool, and then it, just a big spot bike clearing in the sky but the generation still went on until 9 p.m and the 50 50 split was at 10 30 a.m that means by 10 30 a.m my northwest panels were generating half of the energy that was available here so they were already over two kilowatts um, by 10 30. this is talking about the return on investment and the payback period and i've run way too long so all i'm going to say about it is this was the original projection when we got the solar panels that we would see a payback in six years and eight months and of course there's many assumptions in there the tariffs are going to stay the same etc etc our usage pattern would stay the same so you know take this with a pinch of salt but it went to show that we would be well under what people say is that you know 10 to 15 years of payback for solar panels what now I've tweaked our generation because we're actually seeing between 10 to 30% more generation than what was predicted in the forecast. So I've tweaked that, put that in, and that brings our projected uh, payback down to five years, eight months. And I've also factored in that the unit rate of electricity has dropped a little bit since then. So if the unit rate had stayed as high as it was when we got the payback of six years, eight months, actually <clears throat> our payback would be decreasing even more because it's just one of those factors. Anyway, let me wrap this video up. Surface area is more important than orientation within reason, but we just need to fill the roofs that we have and you will see your return on investment. Um, is a home battery a waste of money? My final verdict on that will be coming out later in the year, winter time really, but um, both by generating enough solar energy from your own roof, you may not need a battery. Um, by you utilizing smart tariffs, especially some of the great ones by Octopus Energy, you may not need a battery. 
and also the unit rate of electricity has tumbled so much in the last two years that you may not need a battery as well. So home batteries two years ago, they looked like an absolute no-brainer because of the, um, the gap between the off-peak and peak rates. That is not the case anymore. The gap isn't so great. And so home battery is getting more and more marginal. But of course, everyone's use cases are different. And if you do a lot of miles in an EV especially, then home battery could still make a lot of sense for you. And then the return on investment. I'm hoping that we see the return on investment in our five-year time scale. And of course, that depends on wholesale energy markets and lots of other factors. But I've waffled on five minutes longer than I was expecting. What a failure I am. No regrets so far. Thank you for watching. Come back next month for another update on our Northwest Facing Panels. Goodbye.